Hey everyone, before we talk about America, I suppose I should note that this weekend marks 100 years since the end of the First World War, therefore also the end of four years of seeing the Sunday newspapers lazily panning out their pages with archive material. Don't worry though, it's only another year until we start seeing 80-year commemorative articles about World War II. It's interesting, don't get me wrong, but it's not new. I guess a lifestyle and an opinion piece calling itself a newspaper is a legacy thing these days, like the car phone warehouse, which is actually a small shop, or SNP members swearing allegiance to the United Kingdom with the sort of honesty that you'd expect from a dodgy car mechanic, or someone who said they were only visiting a strip club for the free buffet. So what happened in the news this week in America? Well, last week I said not a lot would happen, and in many respects I was correct. Sure, the Democrats took control of the Congress, but not by anywhere close to the margins that people were talking about. They also failed utterly to take the Senate, and the Republican Party actually gained a seat in Indiana. There was no blue wave in Texas, Ted Cruz kept his seat pretty safely, and don't forget that with Brett Kavanaugh installed and another two years of potential appointees by the Senate, the Supreme Court will likely be conservative-leaning for the next two decades or so. Holding on to all parts of the US government, you see, is a bit like trying to capture a shadow. And the US system is purposely designed to prevent legislation that isn't agreed upon by all four parts of it. So be prepared for a year of nothing, followed by a year of people running for president in 2020. Something that actually sounds more tedious than the aforementioned year of nothing. Sure, the House could go down the road of impeachment proceedings all at once, but they don't control the Senate, so it's a bit like two blokes in a pub discussing what car they'd buy if they won the lottery. In my mind, the interesting thing to come out of the election, aside from the local ballots like Michigan legalising marijuana, is that the new congressman don't actually take those seats until January, so we might see the incumbents happily passing all sorts of crazy laws in the next month or two before they go, safe in the knowledge that they no longer face any electoral consequences. Sort of like when David Cameron delivered a Brexit vote before quickly heading off to the countryside to write a book and drink wine rather than do any real work and follow up on it. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.